Krishna's um, injuries are being uh, healed by Sakura. And meanwhile, Naruto and Minato are having a talk. Naruto, understandably, is still in shock that Kushina did that for him and was willing to sacrifice herself for his safety. And he doesn't understand why. Um, and he just, he feels guilty, obviously. But he, most of all, his, he feels almost frustrated. He still feels frustrated and angry and just, just confused. And it's understandable. Um, and he rants at Minato about he rants, he vents his emotions out on Minato, and just and this is where he shows a bit of his mother's temper here, because um, whilst Naruto can be subdued like his father, it you know as we all know he's got a big temper, he can get angry, and this is something he obviously inherited from Kushina. Um, so he does, he vents it on his father, and he just demands to know why Kushina did this. Why are you being so protective? Why are you trying to stop me from doing what I want to do? You only get in the way, sort of thing. He is frustrated with the fact that he's he can't battle like he usually does because his parents. I I guess he feels his parents are being slightly overbearing. <laughs> Minato just is um just takes the full brunt of this. But Naruto's charade is cut off mid-flow. Um, and there's a slapping sound. And um, the uh, you cut back to see that there's a, a red mark on Naruto's left cheek. Um, and it's obvious that Minato slapped him. Uh, Minato never struck me as a person to have a temper, so it was interesting to see him do that. But Actually, I can sort of see him do that, doing that, because Minato doesn't strike me as somebody who would get mad at his child the way the way Kushina would do. Um, so I think you just settled for that. Um, so, and this is a it obviously works because Naruto just stares at him in disbelief, and Naruto and Minato tells him that they protect him because they care about him and they don't want him to get hurt and they want him to be safe and that you know he should take care of himself he shouldn't keep rushing into situations without thinking about it and at um and not caring the cost and not caring about the cost to himself um and naruto i can't really say anything to that because even though it's how he's used to fighting his dad's got a point and he's quiet and he falls silent and looks at the ground and he just stares at the ground feeling even more guilty now because he realizes is how much pain and worry he must have put his parents through acting like that and this shows that even though he doesn't want to get attached this shows the beginning of him becoming attached i reckon at the beginning he he did feel like he just wanted to latch on to them and but I think he was being very careful and cautious about doing so. And, I, you know, I understand that. After being deprived of parents for most of your life, and then suddenly you're thrown into a place where your parents have all, like almost always been there, but you've never known it. It's so strange. It must be so strange and foreign, you know. But And just ever so painful. But And so... And agonising at the same time. So Naruto is pretty torn at the moment. Um, but Kushina, Kushina, uh, Kushina stands up, and it's obvious that her, and it's clear her injuries have been healed, um, and she's got a stern look on her face, and her tone seems a bit boding, and Naruto braces himself for another, um, for another smack, but instead, instead of striking him, she embraces him tightly and she cries showing how relieved and says how relieved and, and showing her how relieved she is that he's all right um, and she says that she's glad he's not hurt Naruto looking rather defeated and I must say guilt-ridden and conflicted hugs her hugs his mum it's a very touching scene because he's upset for upsetting her and his dad and I guess he just can't can't fight it anymore 
so he gives in and embraces her. And Naruto and uh, Minato smiles. So, even though they keep addressing him as Menma, and Naruto is obviously very frustrated about being called Menma, um, uh, and, uh, he does go along with it in the end. I forgot to say that when they had that conversation about the world being the way it was, and, uh, uh, Sakura says that they may as well go along with it for now until they discover what's going on with this genjutsu and he she even calls him Memma quite teasingly and that really annoys Naruto um, but anyway he decides to go along with it and um, and uh, and Sasuke calls him Menma as well and that annoys him and I think that's the first time he hears Menma as well when they first meet Sasuke but anyhow um, he repeatedly gets called this in the film, and he just get he just goes along with it. So it's obviously Memma is this Genjutsu's Naruto. So anyway, they come back, show the scroll to Sh um, to Shizune and Tsunade. They confirm it's the correct one, and they put it in the archives. So it's obviously something that's powerful and forbidden, and shouldn't really fall into enemy's hands. So enemy hands. So I reckon Jiraiya. Um, it, it, the scroll got lost somewhere, or somebody stole it, and Jiraiya had to get it back from wherever it was taken or wherever it was hidden. So it's now in the right place and where it should be. Meanwhile, um, we we get our first glance of evil Naruto. Now, of course, he's in a mask at this point, but we know he's evil Naruto because we've seen all the most of us have seen the screenshots of his true face, um, and he's talking to Madara. So Madara seems quite transparent in when he's talking to Dark Naruto in this scene. So um, Black Naruto, should I say, in this scene. So it's always that it's always that. Um, these two have got these. These two are conspiring together about something, and it turns out that um, Madara is searching for the Jinchuriki. It seems, as we know, this Genjutsu. In this Genjutsu, things have gone differently. But you see, why would Madara be searching for the Jinchuriki if this was a mere Genjutsu? At this point, um, it becomes clear that it's not ju just. It's not a Genjutsu. It's an alternate world, an alternate universe, a parallel dimension, if you will. And Madara is after the QB and all the other Jinchurikis. Um, but because he knows, because he comes from the world in which all the Jinchurikis have been captured, he decides to use Dark Naruto for his own gains, for his own plans, and asks Dark Naruto to track down the Jinchur other Jinchurikis and get hold of the other beasts. And that's what he does. And, um... The other animals that you see that um, uh, that Dark Naruto has as his cohort, those are the beasts, but they've been sealed into like other animals instead. And there's a little fox that comes around that goes around with him, and that is later to reveal that is later revealed to be the dark version of this world's version of the QB. Um, so. It's obviously it has been this world's QB has been sealed within Dark Naruto, but Naruto is uh, this Dark Naruto is after the other, after the other ones as well. So he and Madara work together to um, to get those Jinchuriki. So whilst that's going on, um, uh, Naruto Naruto goes home. Of course, goes home with his parents. Um, uh, after the mission, Sakura is feeling more and more down because she's feeling she's definitely feeling the impact of um, she's definitely feeling the impact of her parents not being there, and she realizes that's must that's must have been how she realizes that this is what she realizes that this is what Naruto must have felt and has been and has been feeling all this time. So she's basically had a dose, of, she's been given a taste of her own medicine. Um, so she starts thinking about this world. She now has acknowledged it and she and Naruto have acknowledged it as another world now because they start referring to it as such. And she's still trying to figure out what's going on. Um, 
she keeps she's trying to get her head around the fact that there's she's trying to get her head the head around what's going on so she starts thinking about well what's going on here people who should be dead are alive people who are alive at the moment have been killed and she's trying to work out what's going on here um and uh and she decides to talk to Naruto about it because she reckons that um, she reckons that there's something going on, and she reckons that Madara is definitely linked to this somehow. So she goes and wants to talk to Naruto, but when she passes the, and she's feeling, as I said before, she's feeling upset about being alone. She's just, it's just it's wearing off now. The novelty and the wonder and happiness that she experienced coming to this world is now wearing off and the grim reality is starting to set in so she tries to go to Naruto's house and then only to see how much fun he's having um, it's, n it's obviously it's in this world it's Kushina's birthday and it's all being set up and they're having a party and Naruto's laughing his head off and having absolute fun and having such fun and Minato's happy as well and Kushina blows the candles out with, so, with such strength but she actually blows the cake everywhere which is quite amusing um, and Sakura Sakura feels hurt and betrayed so she wanders about alone and sees Sasuke up ahead and this implies to me that the Sakura of this world um, as we know of um, as we know of Road to Sakura, I don't know if you guys remember the filler episode, Road to Sakura, which sort of built on this, and it was set set the same time uh, this movie was going on. Um, this Sakura, obviously, I reckon this Sakura was happy in this world because she had Naruto and Sasuke. Perhaps Sasuke especially, because she had another love, a romantic love, Sasuke, and of course a near familial like bond with Naruto. Anyway, so she sees Sasuke and her mo and she's like and her face lights up only to f become crestfallen when she sees that he's surrounded by girls. You don't catch the first couple of sentences he says, but he repeats the line that he had always that he will always be by this girl, girl by a girl, by the girl's side. Um all the girls are surrounding him and swooning and ooing and ahhing over him and he's got an arm around one girl and, and she's got a rose in another um, so Sakura feels betrayed by this feels absolutely feels very hurt by this and runs off 